So before I start, I just really wanted to thank CMX Summit for giving me the opportunity to speak to y'all. Um, hopefully over the next 10 minutes, I'll be able to share some um, valuable information that will help you see your community in a different way or give you kind of some ammunition on how to support it when people challenge whether or not, you know, it's part of your business strategy as opposed to just a really nice, cool thing that you're doing. Um, and I work at SoFi, I'm the director of community and member success there. So kind of before um, I start, I just want to lay the groundwork for like what is SoFi in case if you're not familiar with it. Um, we are a modern financial company. We're taking a really different approach to personal finance. Um, our approach is both very technology centric as well as customer centric, um, which is where our community piece comes in. And um, we call our customers members, that's very intentional, and you'll hear me kind of use that term over and over again today. Um, and when we started SoFi, we knew that it wasn't just the right thing to do to build relationships with our members um, and build community with them. It was also going to be profitable and help support our business objectives. Um, right now, we offer six different products. We have student loan refinancing, personal loans, mortgages, and a lot of other financial products. Um, so we're working in an industry that traditionally isn't that exciting, doesn't really um, focus on community, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about that today. Um, in addition to the products that you can get with SoFi, all of our members get access to a lot of services to really help support them. Um, one of them is the live events that I'm here to talk to you about, but the other ones are um, our career counseling to help people like answer common questions about their career, provide them coaching, help them get ahead. We have an entrepreneurship program which helps our members who want to start their own businesses. And we also have our live event series um, where we do all kinds of uh, social events like happy hours and dinners. We've taken our members skydiving. We've hosted dating events across the country. Um, and then we also have you know, more tactical content driven events such as um, you know, how to negotiate your next raise, right? A topic that everybody could probably um, use a workshop on. And then um, different topics on personal finance like you know, home buying 101, how do you purchase your first home? So I know you're probably thinking like, okay, community and banking, do those two words really belong in the same sentence? Um, and I think if you know anything about the history of, of banking, you know that community has always been a cornerstone of banking. Um, it has for thousands of years. However, I think you know during 2008 and the financial crisis, people not only lost trust in banks, but community banking like seriously, severely declined, and there's statistics around that. So the community approach really left banking and I think left people feeling, um, feeling very skeptical about it. But we know that banking and financial services, they have like an incredibly low NPS score. The four um, major financial institutions in the United States, they have negative NPS scores. Um, and I won't mention any names, but that means that customers are going around and they're talking about products and services, but they're talking about them negatively. And those impact those banks bottom lines and it impacts their business negatively. Um, so we know that the industry is ripe for disruption, but it's not just ripe for disruption from a technology standpoint, right? Um, I don't think anybody's going around saying, I don't like my bank's app, I'm really, really upset with them. Um, there's something else, there's another piece there, and um, that's really what we're trying to answer. Especially when we think about millennials, you know, we know that they over-index on wanting to connect with brands, wanting to build an authentic experience um, and have a, a community relationship with a brand or a service that they're using. Um, so the challenge for us is really like, how do we do that in an industry that has very little trust? Um, and how do we do that when we ourselves, as a tech company, we don't have any physical locations? Um, some stats I always like to share, 71% of millennials would rather go to a dentist than go to their bank. Um, and the same percentage view their relationship with their bank as purely transactional. There's no relationship, there's no community. Um, and again, I don't think that's just because they don't like the technology, right? There's something deeper there. So the way we've approached this problem of trying to build trust and community with our um, members across the country is to build a community and a team around just that. Our community has a lot of different activities, um, but the one that I'm here to talk to you about today is our live event strategy. Oh, sorry. Um, so 
To date, we've hosted 200 events this year, and we've done that in 60 different cities across the United States, um, and hosted 10,000 of our 200,000 members. So it's about you know 5% of our members who come out and engage with us. We have other ways for the folks who don't want to come out to an event, who are, or who are not able to come out to an event, to come and engage with us. But the events are really a key component of kind of what we're doing. And as I mentioned, it encompasses all kinds of different things, you know, like skydiving and singles and then these more tactical career workshops. So there's really a broad approach there. Um, and I think, you know, something that I find really interesting about the events is, like, if you'll all just take a second with me and, and you think about, like, literally, like, close your eyes. Like, when was the last time that you thought about your personal finances? Like, when was the last time you thought about your bank balance or your student loan debt? or your mortgage payment, or like the fact that maybe you don't feel that you're saving quickly enough for whatever goals you have. Um, so you have that number when the last time you thought about those things were. Um, if you're me, you thought about it like 30 seconds before you walked on stage, because I just think about that stuff all, all the time. Like it, it's a big part of my life, and it's something that you know I'm constantly thinking about. Like, have I paid this bill, or what's up with my student loans? You know, all of that stuff. Um, if you now think about when the last time you actually had like a conducive environment and a community where you could maybe talk to someone about that kind of stuff, um, I think there's a huge gap there, right? And that's really where our opportunity with community is. So what we find with the events is that when people come, um, you know, they're not designed as like a therapy session, right? You don't have to stand up and say, hey, I'm Claire Arthurs, I have student loan debt. You know, you don't have to do any of that. But you're, you're just, you're talking to people and it happens to come up and you're like, oh yeah, like, wow, you mentioned you bought a house. Like, did you do that before or after you paid off your student loan debt? Because like, that's something I'm thinking about. And those community connections are just naturally happening. People are um, getting answers to their questions. They're feeling some relief about stressful topics and they're building true connections. Um, and yeah, I know people are skeptical about events and I totally get it, like the drinks are flowing and are you just taking the drink, you're going in the corner and then you're like leaving out the back door. Um, but we are meticulous about surveying everybody who comes to our events and what we find is that 84% of them, um, they meet someone that they're going to see again. And we actually follow up and we know that they are connecting outside of our events. Um, we've had people start like a bowling league. Um, these are just like anecdotes that I hear. Uh, we've had people start dating, like all kinds of connections are actually happening and people are finding real human value out of these connections. Um, whenever I meet people and I tell them about what I do, I think there's naturally like a lot of curiosity about what we're doing and then there's also a lot of cynicism about it. Um, and I totally get that. Like, I think financial institutions, they, they stop building community, they stop building relationship and so the fact that consumers are a little bit skeptical, like, I think that's totally rightly placed skepticism and I, I completely understand it. Um, but we're not just doing this to like be nice people. I mean, we are doing it to be nice people, but there's also a business case for why we're doing this. So I often get questions like, oh, this sounds really expensive. You know, like, I don't get it. Um, how do you scale it? How do you measure the ROI of it? Like, isn't this just a marketing ploy? I get those questions all the time. So if any of you out there are trying to defend why your community is important and why it drives business objectives. Um, I'll share a few things that we found and we can talk more about it later, but hopefully it helps you. Um, so we just have one of our kind of marketing stats up here, one of our KPIs. Um, referrals are a really, really, really significant channel for us and they're really low acquisition cost. So we want as many referrals as possible. And what we know is that our members, you know, refer other members to SoFi, right? But the people who come to events refer successful candidates three times more often than people who don't come to our events. So we're really engaging with the people who are, you know, driving our business and driving this important acquisition channel. Um, we also know that people who come to events are twice as likely to have like a second or a third or a fourth product with SoFi. So um, they're taking other products and, you know, we're essentially acquiring a new customer or, you know, helping them with other products. Um, the other thing that we know is, you know, when your only touch point with a customer is like, hey, it's the first of the month, could you pay us back your loan? Like, it's pretty boring, right? It's really hard to connect with people over that. and. Um, Eventually they stop opening the email, like they know they need to pay their loan back. Um, maybe they already set it on auto pay. So what we find is that 
our emails from community and events, they have a 30 to 40% higher open rate than our traditional marketing um, communications. So of course, you know, we, we have members who have a student loan and we might say, hey, what about a mortgage? You know, is this something that could help you out? And as a business, you know, we're trying to cross sell, right? Um, but eventually those messages, they just become diluted and they become noise for the customer. Um, and so this is something that people, they open, they look forward to them and our events sell out. So I've had people tell me like, oh man, like I've been trying to get into an event for months, you know, like I really hope I get into the next one. And, and that's great. That's really powerful for us. Like those are the kind of things that, that we want to hear people saying. Um, because it creates, I think, a lot of energy around the brand. And then again, people are creating these authentic relationships, which is really important and we're really proud of. Um, so my lasting kind of piece of advice here is, you know, when SoFi was founded, or when we even formally started the team a year and a half ago, like, if I would have told anybody in this room, um, or any of my friends and family, like, yeah, we're gonna host like dating events and skydiving events, people would have been like, okay, no, you're a bank. Like, banks don't do that, right? So don't do that because you're a bank and banks don't do that. And I think for us, like, the most important thing is we're listening to our members and we're hearing what they want. And if we hear something that's outside of what our category would traditionally do, we're offering it, we're testing it, we're seeing the feedback and the uptake, and then we're doing more or less of it depending on the feedback that we get. So I'm not suggesting that all of you go out and um, do dating events for your community because like that might be super weird or it might be awesome. I don't know your communities, but it's not one size fits all. Um, but just don't let your category define what your community is. Try to think outside of the box, and um, I think sometimes the most unexpected ways to build community and connect are also the most powerful ways to build community and connect. So look for those unexpected things and try them out and see what the reception is. Thank you very much.